Well, I really feel bad following up that awesome strongman workout with this video, but this was the next wow. training video, so all the awesome music and all that is being replaced with the sound of my voice and narration. So I apologize for that. Sorry to let you all down. But we are doing deadlifts because it is Monday. And we are doing a fives day. Glenn decided that he was going to use the exact same weight as me for this workout and try and do five reps on each set. So we decided let's go ahead and see how that goes. So this first set here with 380 pounds or according to Google, 172.37 kilograms rounded for the first set. And this actually felt all right for me, which I was kind of surprised when you can see I'm actually moving the bar with a little bit of speed, but that is probably because I was still feeling so excited from having that awesome Saturday in February. It was warm, and we got to do Strongman, and uh, that wore off wow. quite quickly during this workout. Second set now with 405, and if you don't remember me mentioning this on Two. the fives we do the heavier percentages on the five day instead of doing the 65 75 85 we do 75 80 85 so the jumps are a lot smaller and every set is significantly heavier and you can see that Glenn's already having some trouble on the second set so we figured out you know his strengths there he doesn't have the ability to do the reps yet, so we're going to be working on that, obviously. And here's my off, awesome hooded self here, just doing some 405 for reps, and terrible. But you'll notice I'm still not wearing a belt, and I was doing no belt on 405 for five. as my final warm-up. This actually felt like work tonight. So like I said, uh, anything that I was still feeling strong from Saturday is now gone in this workout. Now the top set for 4.30. Oh! Glenn on a second two. rep already. You see it's getting hard, but he really wanted really to push for three reps on this set. Gave it another shot here. And just wasn't there. So, as I've mentioned on a couple of videos, when I do the fives night, we do not push for a plus. I know as the program is written, you would normally do a five plus, but we are doing the powerlifting program, so you switch the fives day around. Instead of going five three one, you go three five one, and you take a little bit easier on the fives because you're supposed to do more singles or doubles or triples on your one and your threes day. I've not been doing very well with those, but with the diet, I'm just not feeling it. Now we're moving over to the overheads. It is a deload night, and as it is a deload night, we are going to do five sets of 10 wow. with 105 pounds Six. so nothing really crazy here Seven. and the goal is to just Eight. get some blood in the region focus Nine. on 10 reps to get a little bit of hypertrophy Ten. in there although we're not really doing anything slow to One. maximize time under tension or anything Two. like that like you would do in a traditional bodybuilding Three. program but just really trying Four. to get a lot of reps in get some Five. blood recovery going maybe get a little bit of endurance in there but because of that and yeah. the fact that I really, really did not want to have this video be 45 minutes long, which is what it was before I started editing, I only left set one and set five in here. Now, what I did on set five, we wanted to do a 10 plus. That was kind of spur of the moment. But to change it up, we were doing touch and go. So you can see now the difference between how we do overheads where you pause it at the bottom and try and breathe or hold your breath and then go up and eliminate the stretch reflex versus touch and go. Touch and go just is so much easier. You get that momentum, the stretch reflex, and you can get a lot more reps. Look at that. It's just it's so much easier. I can actually push it fast when it's touch and go. So uh, I don't know how I feel about doing touch and go. It's kind of fun to just knock out some reps really quick every once in a while. 
Uh, touch and go benching obviously is something that we do. We don't really practice the pause because my powerlifting competition is not going to work out right now. Uh, I'm not too worried about practicing the pause so we get closer to that. We also did three sets of dips and I also only put one set of dips in here. So this is our first set and you can see Glenn here. This is his first time doing dips since he's been back. Wanted to try that out. At least I believe it's the first time. I could be wrong. I'm not going to go back through the videos to look. But either way, he is doing really well on this. And except for that little uh, kick there. I'm not sure exactly what that was supposed to help. Now you get me on here. I was really worried about doing dips. This is something that I'm really worried about re-injuring the rotator cuff. I have been not feeling great in the bench. So I was kind of worried about this. So I didn't want to go too deep. Wanted to stay just slightly above parallel. Although the last uh, one and a half wasn't quite down far enough that I would consider a really good rep but it is what it is now we move over to the hack squat we really wanted to try something completely different do a bodybuilding type routine uh, for the hack squat with our legs in so this is not to translate into our normal squats which we would obviously have a wider base it's not to do anything except for try and hit something different and do it in a higher rep range and you'll notice glenn is going very shallow on this and that's what you know most people do that anyways but he was having some problems with the hack squat hurting his knee and that is not good so i told him just you know kind of go down as far as you can i asked him during the set if he could go further and the answer was no so don't put yourself in a position, whether you're squatting, hack squatting, or leg pressing, where it's hurting your knee. Now with me, I really had a very difficult time with this. Just trying to keep my legs together was kind of difficult, especially when you have that many layers of clothes down. But this doesn't bother my knee at all. So you can see there, I'm going down until my butt touches the pad, got my several layers of clothes a little bit too tight there so i apologize for that adjustment that had to be done and i'm just trying to get as many reps as i could in here and like i said i did do three sets i'm only showing you the first set here on the third set i tried something different which was going up on my toes which was something i saw a lot of bodybuilders say hey do this to really work on the outer part of your quads and, and just focus it 100 percent on the quads that did actually bother my knee so i would not advise that if you have any problems with your knee whatsoever and i was kind of torn on how to do this whether i wanted to eliminate the set but i decided to leave set one and two of the ghr in here and we were doing a superset so it was the hack squat and then going over to the ghr although it wasn't exactly a superset because there was the pause from glenn doing it to me doing it but this first one this is the most reps glenn's ever done on the ghr with no weight so that was a pr you will notice we're only going halfway down. That's just to really focus on the hamstrings and the glutes. Although, after talking to Clint Darden, who if you don't know who that is, you need to go look to, at his channel right now. I don't care who you are. Hands down, my favorite YouTuber. I've been watching him for many, many years. And although he got banned from YouTube a little bit and went to Vimeo, now he's back on YouTube awesome guy uh, really inspiring really great videos i i love his channel he said to go all the way down so when we continue doing ghrs in the future we will make sure that we go all the way down not stopping at parallel now we go into the second set and the reason i left this in here is i wanted to show you that we were using some weight as well and glenn is pretty much done at this point and that is because we are so out of practice with the yoke, he tried doing the yoke by carrying it in a low bar squat position. That is bad for multiple reasons, but a low bar squat is going to put a lot more stress on your lower back, and walking like that is bad. I can't, I can't stop. Like, that's the hard part. Like, going up, coming back down, that's easy. 
So there's his explanation. His lower back's just done. There's me putting the plate on the wrong side. If you have no hair and you are bald, do not have the letters of the plate towards you because you will scratch up the back of your head. It's uncomfortable. Don't do it. So I'm here with the 25 pound because I remember to not carry the yoke in a low bar squat position. A yoke is not a squat. Do not do it the same. Treat it differently. But uh, switched over to the 10 pounder now. I'm just trying to get as many reps as I can. So I did some with 25, switched to the 10. Now I'm dropping the 10 and just calling it done. Now this is the fat man pull-ups with a neutral grip. We are using the dip station so that we can actually get the neutral grip because I don't feel like spending money on getting all the different pull-up attachments because I can't do a pull-up, so why bother? But these are actually surprisingly difficult. Uh, you know, you hear all sorts of people say like, oh, you know, you're using your legs and all this should make it really easy. It's still pretty hard. I mean, I'm still heavy, still can't really pull myself up. But we did a um, super set here, and what we did is uh, one round each of us, and then the other one would go, and we did three rounds. So we went and did the uh, pull-ups, and then we went into the next thing, and I'm putting the pull-ups first, but we did as many chest flies as we could and we hit each grip so this first one you'll see we started with our arms up and you can see the two handles on the outside so the second set we went to the outside handle and then the third set we went to the bottom and after we did as many as we could with the pec fly we went and did push-ups so as I said we did three rounds of this I'm not gonna leave all that footage in there it's just way too long and this video is already too long and those of you who are still watching if you're watching this far on this video and you didn't do it for the strongman video go watch the whole thing of the strongman video because there are some good parts in there that I really thought were great and, and I'm kinda proud of that video even though I don't have really great editing skills but you can see this is just really hard yeah. Go, go, go. Yeah. <laughs> he forgot about the push ups. You know, when you're doing the super set, you just kind of forget. And One, the burning two, from the three, pack deck and then going four, into doing push ups was five, amazing. And I can see six, why anybody seven, doing any sort of bodybuilding eight, whatsoever would actually enjoy nine, this. But I personally ten, hate the feeling of a pump. Eleven, it is not seven, enjoyable to me in the least. But. There's two reasons I want to work on the pec flies. The first one is I want to get the chest a little bit stronger. I've been benching for a very long time with a close grip. And like I said in a couple comments in the videos, my bench is just feeling terrible right now. So I want to get the chest stronger. I'm going to be playing around with all sorts of different grips, trying to figure out where I can actually get the bench feeling good but also you're gonna really use the pec muscles to squeeze your arms together on a stone so that is one of the few transfers that your pec muscles are going to have in strongman so we want to make sure that we're able to grip a stone good and this is obviously going to do a much better job of it than benching will do and that is it for this video like i said we did three rounds of this nobody wants to see all that i apologize you're having a look at my butt right now but go lift something heavy no excuses have some fun take it easy